Welcome everybody to protect the services meeting on uh, the third, I believe, of April at 12 noon at City Hall. There is one item on the agenda. Uh, first of all, we call the meeting to order. I need approval of the agenda. Moved by your worship. Councillor Beck, you with us? Uh, second by Councillor Beck. Any of the conflicts of interest? Seeing none. Uh, Deputy Mayor, are you on the air? Yep, I'm here. Okay, you're good so far? I'm good so far, yes, thank you. Thank you. Approval of the previous draft minutes, March 20th and March 21st, 2024. Moved by your worship, Mayor Brown, second by uh, Deputy Mayor Yankoff. Any, any business arising from those minutes? Councillor Beck. Yeah, just a couple things. Um, uh, one for uh, your worship, you mentioned the, um, at our last meeting you were talking about, we were talking about the uninhabited buildings and you, you referenced St. John. And I know, I think you might have referenced that there was something, uh, what they do with a vacant building bylaw, and you're going to forward something to us. Can you shoot that to us? Uh, Councillor Beck, what page is that? Uh, page three. Page three. Last paragraph under B. Mayor Brown noted St. John recently passed a vacant yeah. building bylaw law. Can so, you just yeah, pass that on to us? I will. Um, she would, um, speaking to Mayor Donna Reardon of uh, St. John, she did connect me with a point person that's working on that uh, bylaw. So yes, I was to follow up on that. I will follow up Perfect. on today. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, Deputy Mayor, do you have any questions? Um, I have something else. Not, oh. not yet, thank you. Okay, yeah. go ahead, Councilor Beck, sorry. Um, just uh, for the uh, police chief, um, just wanted to get a uh, kind of sense, chief, of what the door-to-door uh, -door um, you were going door to door with the outreach center, uh, kind of, uh, to talk with residents. Can you just talk about that or is that going to be part of, uh, just can you provide a bit of an update there for us today or is that, uh, should that be done at another time or? Well, I'm first sure. of all, I, we only, we're going to go with this one, one topic today and then you know, if we want to keep bringing things up, we, we can, we're going to meet in a couple of weeks, if that's okay with you. So if, if it could be, it would be done at the next meeting. Not okay with fine. you, Chief? Yes, sir. Fine okay. with me. Yep. Good. All right. Yep. Okay. Reports. E-scooters. We have Constable Dale Johnson here. Our last couple of meetings with the e-scooters and, and the kick scooters and bikes and everything, there's a lot of questions on it and this is the reason we set this meeting up to get probably full clarification on this because this is under under Dale's file and he's been dealing with this and we'd like to know where we're at and where we're going and what are the rules and what are the regulations so at this time I'd like Dale to sort of present his report and then once he's done we can if we if we have any questions we can go from there is that good with everybody Councilman Dale Johnson Thank you, Chair. Uh, first of all, I want to thank the committee for this opportunity uh, to present to them the issues of the rental scooters and uh, rental scooter bylaw. Uh, before I begin, I just wanted to state, uh, with all the controversy going on, that it was not our intent uh, to suspend or shut Taft down. He's been very cooperative. We've gotten along fantastic in the last year or so. Uh, we just want to continue to grow uh, and to make that a positive experience for everyone. Um, so I've been watching some of the committee meetings and uh, there's been a lot of questions. So through my report, I hope to answer as many of those questions as I can. Um, first of all, a little bit of the history. Uh, Taft started back in 2022 when he started Epic Scooter Rentals in Charlottetown. Um, and I apologize, Taft, if some of my numbers aren't perfectly correct. This is the information that I've had uh, through meetings and stuff. Um, he started with about 20 scooters and they were down at the waterfront, uh, Founders Hall and Peak, so it was private property. 
Uh, in February 2023, uh, TAF presented a meeting with Chief McConnell, Scott Adams, Constable Suckliffe, and myself. Uh, and this meeting was held in the community room at the Charlottetown Police Station. TAF is requesting the city's approval to identify numerous locations throughout the city where he could have his scooters for rent. Uh, Epic Scooters had identified approximately 27 locations where he would like to rent and return his scooters through the Epic Scooter app. Uh, permission for public access of city property was granted to TAF in 2023 uh, for the 2023 season from the public works manager through emails uh, between TAF and the manager. Permission was granted for the season of 2023. So it's been brought up at committee meetings about police having the tools to charge the offenders for violations. Um, yes, we have the tools to charge. We, are, we would like to have this as a positive outcome for individuals, especially the tourists coming to PEI, um, as I'll explain a little bit later. Um, positive change prevent complaints and injuries and to create a positive experience to renting, not a negative. We're attempting to support a growing business in Charlottetown, and I want to emphasize that, that we support TAF uh, very much. Uh, in any way we can to find a developing set of bylaws, we, can, uh, we are contributing to do this. Through the research, it's been identified that there are numerous cities around the world that have restricted the use of shared kick scooters in cities such as Chicago, Copenhagen. Uh, now, this has restricted the use of them. Manhattan and other cities such as Amsterdam, Edinburgh, Honolulu, Philadelphia, Sydney, Barcelona, Toronto, and most recently Paris have banned kick scooters altogether. Uh, Halifax has completed a 50-page report on the electric kick scooters, which resulted in bylaw M300 micro-mobility bylaw. Um, you can find that on their website. I do have a hard copy here if anybody's interested in, in reading. It's quite a lengthy report. Um, this information brought forth, not the, in this information that I brought forth is not with the intent of banning the electric kick scooters, but to show the committee the importance of having the bylaws to provide a safe scooter rentals. From brought up during committee as to Ontario, what do they do? So in Ontario, anyone over the age of 16 is not required to wear a helmet in Ontario. Um, it's been great working with, with TAF. The Epic scooters are controlled by computer. So he's able to GPS locate control speeds, the geofencing. Um, you can go on his website and it shows all the different areas where the red zones, it slows down, the yellow zones, sorry, the red zones shut them off. So he's able by computer to control where they go, how fast they go. Um, this has reduced complaints as to unwanted areas, speeds of the scooters. And although TAF has set up a map of the area, more consultation with police to identify these areas. Uh, I do know that uh, there's been a couple areas with school zones that are great now, but we can lighten them up as the summer progresses when there's no school in place. Uh, through time, TAF has been great to deal with. Uh, he's, he's corrected a lot of the issues that we brought forth to him by police. Issues still remain, but working together, I'm sure we can resolve these issues. Uh, the police department and TAF are uh, committed to working together uh, to deal with any ongoing issues. Does anyone have any questions? Any questions in there, yeah, folks? I do. Uh, yep. Your Worship, go ahead. Dale, first of all, I want to say thank you very much for this uh, overview and the research that you've done to this point. I know that you're a committed police officer to the Charlottetown Police Services. I know your work that you did with schools, outreach to schools. I know where you're coming from. Um, it's just that this issue uh, touched a nerve for me because I thought there was, you know, we were all on the same same, uh, same page. But what I went back to was your report, Dale, uh, that was uh, brought to our attention the 20th where it says, Charlottetown Police have received numerous complaints concerning these scooters, including no helmets, riding on sidewalks, riding on boardwalk, riding through red lights, riding through stop signs, underage operators, scooter drivers can't be seen at night, and driving while impaired. That reminds me, or makes, paints an image of cycling in Charlottetown that's been going on for a number of years, like, and I brought this up, and Kenny uh, Mernion, who's in the, in the gallery, is 
former uh, head of the Brain Injury Association. He knows full, full well the, the, the dangers of not wearing a helmet. So I, I brought that in, into the context of just cyclists in general, but we're looking at uh, doing a bike share. That is e-bikes, uh, similar to what they have in Montreal and Toronto. And um, I've been in Toronto and Montreal. These e-bike uh, users are not wearing helmets. So if we get into that business, how do we manage uh, or administer uh, that type of uh, transportation and, and, and coupled with our e-scooters? So, and our traditional cyclists that are out there riding bikes without helmets, not abiding by the, the laws. But we do have the tools in place. You've said that. And we're getting more boots on the ground with the most recent budget of uh, City Council for 24-25. So that's where I'm coming from. I, this is a bigger picture for me. It's not just about the e-scooters. It's about what's going on the streets now and this bike share program that we're looking at for the city in the, uh, for the future. As far as a lot of the issues that have happened as of last year uh, in communications with TAF, he's been great to deal with those issues. Uh, at first, there were no helmets. Then the helmets were on the scooter. And now he's got a locking system that provides a scooter for everyone. Um, in talking with TAF now the last few weeks, He's got an educational program as far as wearing a helmet. Like I said, if anybody coming from Ontario, they go through the app, they unlock the scooter, and away they go. Uh, the impaired driving issues, um, he's got a, a test after 5 p.m. We've lowered the, the time limit on that. So anyone after 5 p.m. that goes in to wants to rent a scooter has to do a test, and I believe it's three times before they're locked out. Um, as far as certain, the technology that this gentleman has put into it is unreal. He's, he's got uh, uh, ID recognition. So you need a driver's license because you have to be over 16. So it takes a picture of your driver's license. And Taft could tell you way more better than I can. Then it takes a picture of your face, compares the two to make sure it's the same person. Like the technology involved in these scooters is incredible. Uh, now that the scooters are equipped with the locking helmets, once it's unlocked, they've got the helmets. It's going to be our jobs to do the education. Um, I've been in touch with the sergeant. We've talked about this. Our community action team is going to be downtown a little more, dealing with them uh, as far as not wearing helmets, enforcing the rules of the road to make it safer. Uh, TAF staff, uh, giving them a little bit of education as far as how to approach people, let them know that this is what you have to do in order to continue to ride. Thanks, Dale. Uh, on, on that, too, I was thinking about this last night with the helmet thing. <laughs> do we hit them with a fine right away, or do we give them a warning and say, why is the helmet hooked up to the back of the scooter when you're driving it? Uh, like, you can always drive by, like in a police cruiser or something, and just say, get your helmet on, and then keep going, right? And I think this is the thing, and people say, well, now he's gone beyond the next street. I'll just, I won't bother, you know. Like... I, I'm just trying to think how we can enforce this. Like, you stop right there and say, your helmet's here, but you're not wearing it, so here's a $10 fine or $50 fine, whatever it is. I, I, I'm just trying to wrap my head around that part of it. Yeah, under the regulations, the, under the Highway Traffic Act, the electric e-bike regulations, it's a $50 fine. Uh, again, like I stated earlier, we would like to encourage people to wear them. I, I think once people are advised of the laws, and put them on, then they'll stay on. But it's just a matter of us encouraging and educating the people. Um, I know there's, there's quite a few, uh, His Worship has mentioned numerous times as far as uh, bicyclists not wearing helmets. Um, I totally agree. I, as a kid, it was just part of putting your seatbelt on the car. Uh, I think it's more important to have it on in a scooter because you've got an eight to 10 inch wheel instead of a 30 inch wheel. So. Uh, the chances of, of hang, having an incident are quite a bit more. Um, again, it's the education. I don't think, like I said earlier, we'd like to make it a positive. Educate rather than handing out fines and being a negative um, situation. Uh, if we do the education, then next time 
they'd be more likely to, to put the helmet on when they rent the scooter. Uh, Deputy Mayor Yankoff, you have any questions so I don't forget about you? Um, sure. Um, that we received in March 20th that, that his worship pointed out was to not recommend that these um, that this company proceed this summer so now our staff recommendation has changed and I'm, I'm still wondering what we're doing to address from my understanding the reason that this has come up is other companies may want to operate this summer as well so although it's great that we want to work with on on his company what um, what are we doing for the short term without a bylaw for the summer for TAF and other operators to be able to work um, to operate that's a good question so yeah. we, we've I've been in contact with TAF uh, just in the last few days uh, we are going to continue with um, rules for lack of a better word uh, that we agreed to last summer. We're going to continue on with those. And again, it's, it's going to be one of these things. It's not a full year. It's three, four months during the summer, which is really what you have to work on this program. Uh, Taff and I are going to stay in close communication. And if issues come up, then we're going to work together to, uh, to alleviate them and hopefully they don't continue. The other company that he the gentleman approached us. Um, we spoke to him at the office for about 20 minutes, and we haven't heard anything since. So we have no idea what his intentions are. Mr. Chair, could I just ask? But Go ahead, George. I, I, I mentioned this last uh, at the last meeting, uh, Constable Dale. Is it you're you're in the process of putting together a bylaw? That's I think that's what we heard at the last meeting. Is that there's a there's, there's a bylaw in, in the making. And you know, when you look at other bylaws that we have, we do have non-conforming use, and that could be used loosely here, but he's already been in business, so anything going forward, could we say that that's not gonna happen for new operators until we get a bylaw in place? Is that something that we can do, or is that uh, out of the realm of, I don't know if the chief can answer, the CAO, or director of finance administration, or Dale yourself, if, you know, we, we want to study it, put something in place, and uh, and then when it's in place and passed, goes through this this level of government, um, you know, it's it we're open for business. But and and the second question, Dale, is the provincial fine is fifty dollars without no helmet. What's the what's the city of Charlottetown's uh, fine for uh, cycling without a helmet? Is it fifty? I thought it was more. Under the bylaw, I'm not sure. Oh, okay. So we are more, yeah, yeah. So, and there's, again, we have to, like, when we brought, when the province brought in the seatbelt law, they aggressively went after that whole issue of people wearing their seatbelts. There were, uh, you know, stops, there were checkpoints where people were asked either to put them on or they were fine. It's just, Dale, you, you've opened up a broader issue here, a broader um, uh, concern about our cyclists that are on the roads now, the e-scooters, the e-bikes. And I know from uh, being an owner and operator of an e-bike, I did take a fall on my e-bike, probably going at 15 kilometers. And I'm glad I had my helmet on because I did hit head first. And uh, again, you're looking at maximum 30 kilometers on some of these e-bikes. If you go for a fall on an e-bike without a helmet, that's going to be a dangerous you know, consequence for the operator or, or the person that's involved in the accident. So, like, this is a, I'm glad that we're talking about it because this needs to be discussed, especially if we want to go to that next level of going to the bike share with e-bikes, with the province already on board to provide money through their active transportation uh, pathway fund. Like, you know, the, the sky's the limit. I, I agree, Your Worship, and, and I think that's why a lot of this is coming to head is because the the e-bikes e are becoming more affordable. Uh, price of fuel, there are more and more people buying them. I have one myself. Um, I just I don't understand why people don't wear the helmets. Um, through education, um, I think we can slowly turn this around. And I know Kenny's been involved with us with the police department in the past. 
and uh, through the summer, hopefully we can get something going again. Councillor Beck, how are you doing? Yeah, I, I just want, I, I'm wondering on that education piece in terms of like, um, you know, it, it was referenced here, the education series that you have. Uh, can you elaborate a little bit more on that TAF? What, uh, or Dale, you referenced an education series that TAF has. Could you, um, I, I'm not disagreeing with the education piece. Um, I, but I do agree with his worship that there, there, there has to be an enforcement enhancement, I guess would probably be the best part. But I'm curious to hear a little bit more about the education piece. Taff, maybe if you can elaborate on that for us. Thank you. So um, our latest feature that we're going to be releasing this summer is um, the way it works is people download the app. So after they download the app, they go through the process, ID verification, reaction test, and then um, a, safety, uh, a safety information thing appears before they rent. And then after they read the safety information, they click right on the scooter. So when the scooter unlocks, it reads that information document again to them, the scooter itself. Like it, it will say the rules of the road, like wear the helmet, do not ride on sidewalks, um, etc. So that's the latest feature that we're releasing. I, I, I have a video that I sent to Constable Dale Johnson, and I'll be happy to send it to you after the meeting as well. I'd, I'd like to see that. Yeah. yeah, that'd be great. Um, so, if I'm understanding you correctly, it's part video, part text. Part no, no, no. So no. the scooter, yeah. it would talk to to the user. Yeah. It will read back the safety rules. Okay. So it'd be like attention rider, please make sure not to ride on sidewalks, wear a helmet. Okay. No under sixteen years old, etc. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Beck. Uh, uh, just oh, just oh, one sorry. other thing, and uh, I, I guess that's good to know. In how, how long is the TAF? How long is that minute, minute and a half, something like that? Um, I think it's about 30 seconds. 30 seconds? Yes. Okay. I'm wondering, and I don't know, uh, we, have our, we, we have a communications department. Um, if we're moving ahead, is there an opportunity to to do some collaborative work with um, TAF on that to help get the messaging out? Because I think messaging is important. If we're going to do this, if we're talking about proactive or positive solutions, I think it's important that we get good messaging out. And <clears throat> if that's safety preventative stuff, that's what we're trying to address here. I think. There's everyone in the room appreciates the work that you've put into this TAF and the collaborative approach that you've taken and the cooperation that you've demonstrated. So I think from our end, if we have tools at our disposal that we can use to help educate, if we're talking about educating, I don't think you can educate too much. And you can't get enough information out about people to say, oh, gee, I didn't know about that, or I wasn't aware of that. So I'm just trying to, I guess, uh, propose that if we are going to go down this road and try and find a workable solution, let's use whatever tools we can. And and I appreciate something like that happening, uh, but if that's something that we can use in in our from our end to help on promotional side of things, I think that would be uh, um, an investment too. But maybe I'll leave that just food for thought and uh, consideration going forward. Thanks. Yes, uh, I agree, and um, I'll reach out to Constable Dell and also the staff to see if we can do a collaboration. Uh, and also, the feature I was talking about, so it's available in, on each and every scooter of ours. So the, um, the education, uh, we call it an on-demand rider education program. It's available to everybody, no matter how many times you use the scooter, as soon as you unlock the scooter, it will give you that message 
saying that these are the rules of the road. You can't skip it. Yeah. Taf, uh, where's your home base at? Like your office or something like that. Where do you work out of? Uh, Queen Street. Queen Street? Yes. Is it a storefront or something like that? Like, what, I guess, and this is my own personal opinion, <clears throat> if you had your, all your scooters in one place, for example, and people were going in to rent them, uh, and then if there's somebody there and saying, well, these are your rules. I, I know you have them on the app and everything, but these are the rules of the road and the rules of the city. You've got to have a helmet on and things along that line. I think more one-on-one -on -one with people, but then again, that's going to be more cost to you, too, to have a have a storefront, basically, because you've got to have employees there. And, and I understand that, too, with a new business. But I, I'm just saying if it's more one-on-one -on -one and saying, well, I want to rent this scooter off you, well, the, here's are the rules that you've got to abide by. So we we have staff uh, that usually be driving around during the summer, and if they see a group of people who want to rent e-scooters, um, they usually go and talk to them. And um, on the app, like I said, we have like two um, two features that actually shows the rules of the road to the users, and also when the rider is about to ride the scooter, the scooter reads back. The message so yeah the storefront is not really optional for us because it will be not um, it's, it's not the business model we want to make e-scooters very convenient to people and like the mayor said um, you know the, the city is planning to do a bike share so I really think this is a very good uh, opportunity for the community to see how the bike share is going to feel to learn about the rules of the road using our services. We have about uh, 12,000 users and we think if we manage to push the message through our 12,000 users they are actually able to get the message and be able to follow the rules. Thank you for that. Any Councillor Beck? So, while we're trying to continue to build this plane as we're flying it, are we dealing with one company only? Are we saying that we are only dealing with TAF for this summer because we really don't have, we really don't have, we're, we're, we're kind of, I, I guess I kind of see this as working with TAF to kind of help us with a comprehensive plan going forward. And I think we're gonna learn stuff from having your business in place that can help shape, guide any future comprehensive policy that we have that could address what His worship saying about bike, safe, bike helmet, because they're all the same, they're all safety. So they're, what applies to a kick scooter can apply to a knee bike, traditional bike, whatever it might be. So, I guess I'm just, and I know the the deputy answer or asked the question earlier, and I, I had the same question. Are we are we going to just say are we going to cap or limit or only work with TAF and continue as we continue to work towards coming up with a long term solution? Are we going to um, say the shop is closed for others or are we going to allow others to come in and then potentially add to the work that's being done? I don't know if I've heard an answer for that or whether that's... Yeah, I basically understood that uh, since Taft started his business last year that we're going to work with him, or uh, may I could be wrong, that we're going to work with him and then any new people we're going to look at in the future, I guess, uh, you know, once the bylaw is in place, and then we have a have a platform. Is that true, or, or chair? If I could, yes. So um, just comment in there. So <clears throat> I think there's a few important things to mention here. Is that first of all, um, a new business doesn't need any approvals to operate in in the city. Um, that's the current gap that we're looking to fill with the bylaws. Um, so. There's no, there's no mechanism for it right now to prohibit anyone else from, uh, we've, the partnership that was formed with TAF last year was in combination to the land use, the city use 
of his locations, and we came to an agreement um, to continue on with that. However, there's no there's nothing currently that would prevent a new business from starting. So the, the idea of the bylaw would be to to bring that into some form of, of regulation. Um, but wouldn't they have to work much like Taft did and come in and work with Dale and uh, say what are we doing? How we how's this going to work? I mean, I don't I don't think it's well. It's part of of what uh, we do is is engage and obviously uh, looking for responsibility from from vendors and. Uh, and to try to work with them to help them be, uh, you know, certainly fit into our, our community standards and uh, lessen the impact. Um, but there is a gap here to fill, uh, make no mistake about it. And it's not just in business of scooters, it's residential people have private scooters and mm -hmm. uh, they're, they're regulated under the, under the bylaw. But I think is what we heard today that there's also an educational gap. And, uh, and for bicycles over the years, uh, Operation Headway, um, which was a diversionary program that in, in lieu of getting a fine, you were required to go to a two hour educational uh, program to, so the fine, um, in lieu of the fine. I think we need, as this technology and, and micro transportation um, continues to grow, we have to find a program akin to that so we can help our population transition into the responsibility of of using uh, using these devices responsibly, and uh, so there is definitely work to do, and um, and uh, right now there's some gaps to fill for sure. So on that note, is is Taft the only company in the queue for this year? I know there was uh, an interest expressed of another company who you haven't heard back from. Or is. Is he the only comp is Taft's the only company that has been looking to set up shop here for this year? I am not aware of any others other than one that uh, had reached out and uh, and hasn't we haven't received any correspondence from. But um, certainly, um, it it is possible someone else yeah. may enter into that and into that space also. Okay, thank you, uh, Deputy Mayor. You okay? Yeah. No, I'm not okay. I mean, I'm okay, but I do have a few more questions. Um, so there was constant reference to this company as a pilot project. So I'm just, I'm just trying to get my head around. So this is no longer a pilot project. He can operate a business. Anybody can open up um, a scooter business. But for, if, I hear, if I heard the chief correctly, the the memorandum of understanding or the the verbal agreement, whatever that might have looked like, with Tab that he entered into with the city was was using the city property. And if that's if I'm correct in that assumption, is there a copy of this memorandum of understanding, or is there a, another agreement going to be in place? Um, I, just if there's any more clarity around that, I would appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Chief or Dale. Uh, Chair, the um, the original agreement back in 2023 was basically between Taft through emails and um, the public works manager as to granting him public access to city property. Uh, and I believe that's going to continue as far as I know. As far as an official form or anything again it's like the chief had mentioned there there's a, a few little gaps but it's nothing so he was given written permission you okay with that deputy mayor can i just follow up yes you uh, may no can i follow up uh councillor ramsey so he was given uh, permission through email uh through public works for last year to be on public property so is there going to be um, a more formalized agreement this year? So we're not in the same situation next year in terms of just so that we have clear lines of communication and rules, regulations in case somebody else comes along that, you know, it's hard for, if, if Public Works is going to grant permission to one e-scooter company to be on public property, what is, will our justification be to say, well, we can only grant one company. I uh, just, I'm just trying to, to alleviate and, and avoid any 
further problems um, as we progr um, progress into 2024. Dale, can you answer that? Uh, Chair, Councillor, uh, to my knowledge, I'm not sure, but I can definitely look into that and, and come back with an answer. Okay, oh. just one more follow-up, um, Councillor Ramsey. Go right ahead. So I would think then that it's hard for us to make a decision when we don't really have all the information and the answers yet to these additional questions. Sorry, Councillor, could you repeat that? Yeah, um, I think I think we lost you, Deputy Mayor. Yeah, are you still there? Okay, go ahead. Yes, go ahead. Okay. So, how do we make a recommendation today? when we still don't have the answers that we ask um, in terms of the public works questions? Uh, Councillor, it's uh, basically we're agreeing as to what was presented last summer. Uh, we made, uh, I think, huge progression last year as far as advancements. Uh, TAF has put a lot of time, money, and technology into these scooters. Uh, they've only gotten better. Um, and I think um, at this point, there's really no reason not to let him continue. Um, if, if things go away, then um, it's just a matter of, uh, and I've spoken to the public works manager, that um, maybe just revoke his permission to use public access, but I don't see that at all in the future. And so should we have a written agreement with him for this year that would state all these things until we have a bylaw? Uh, Councillor, I, I, I believe, maybe the Chief can answer this, but I, I, I believe that uh, between the Public Works Manager and TAF, that they do have uh, a written agreement through emails. Uh, I can communicate more with the manager to have more detail in this one as it seems to be a little bit more engaged than it was last year, um, if that would be suffice. Chair, if I could. Go ahead, Chief. Yeah, uh, Chair, uh, Councillor Yankoff, um, I think this uh, report has evolved a bit since the first recommendation. And uh, actually, today's uh, is more of an informative session. I don't think, uh, I think now um, staff recommendation is, is not looking for council to make a decision, but also but just to provide information about the current situation and how has it evolved and uh, how it's moving forward this summer. And uh, your comments about the uh, the agreement uh, were noted, and uh, we'll uh, consult with the public works manager to see if there's more to to be done there. Yeah, thank you. Uh, do we have to make a recommendation? CAO Eleanor to take this to council or we just status quo that that he can start his program again because we meet council next week so do we need a recommendation to move on to council I don't think we do do we no right yeah okay I just want to clarify that so Taft go ahead thank you chair so uh, there is um, an agreement that was drafted by public courts. So this agreement only outlines the parking locations that we are able to use. The agreement hasn't been signed. I think it's uh, waiting for the CAO and the mayor to just uh, sign it off. Um, I think the reason why it hasn't been signed off is because we're, we're just trying out to see how things are going to go. Um, but I, there is an agreement and this agreement automatically renews every year. Thank you, and uh, with this moving forward, do we remove the word pilot project? Like like how many years ago 
like by saying it's a pilot project. But this pilot project is just an experimental, I believe, in my mind, that you start something out and you try it, and if it doesn't work on either side, well, then you can always cancel it. So do we remove that word pilot, or, or, or is it still a pilot project? Yeah. I, I think the report just referred to it as a pilot project, yeah. as an initial project, yeah. but there was no like, formal piece of it as okay. Mr. Chair, just, just in a point of order, if I go back to the <clears throat> document that was provided by Constable uh, Johnson, staff recommendation that council suspend all scooter, scooter rentals until detailed scooter rental bylaw can be drafted and implemented. So to go to the deputy mayor's point, um, we're not going down that route. We're, we're, it's business as usual. This is not about regulating a business. This was a recommendation that we discussed at our March 20th meeting. So that's off the table. I just do want to ask something, uh, Mr. Chair. If I go to the traffic bylaw, which is what governs what we're doing here today. Um, um, I have some sections here that deal with uh, contravention of the, um, of the bylaw. And it does give a definition for a bicycle on page one. It does give a, uh, on page seven, page 20, 16 and 17, Page 7, 16, 17, 17, and 20 talks about fines that can be administered. Then, Dale, on the last page, it lists the fines under this traffic bylaw. But it doesn't state anything for um, no helmet. So I don't know if it's there in the bylaw, the traffic bylaw. So I just if I can just continue, uh, Dale. Um, and it does talk about like under, under on page 17 or page 20 section 15.7 a person who violates any provision of this bylaw if no other penalty penalty for the violation is provided herein is liable to a fine of not less than $100 and not more than $300 so i don't know if that applies to the penalty uh, no helmet uh, wear no helmet but if you go to your list of fines it's not listed not there listed. and there's no there's also no no definition for helmet like in other jurisdictions i think they make sure it's a csa approved helmet so these are some of the things that you brought to light dale so i'm i'm glad that we're having this discussion because now when we look at putting together a new bylaw to regulate or to talk about address scooters e-scooters e-bikes and bicycles has to be uh, defined also because it doesn't address uh, e-bikes in in the traffic bylaw. So the lo there's a lot of a lot of balls in the air right now that we are we, we are going to have to address. And so, again, I appreciate that we're discussing it. And Tap, I'm I'm you know I'm a, I appreciate the work that he's done, and I want to recognize that his mentor is Kim Green, who's also in the gallery here, who's been a great uh, asset and I'm sure advisor to him and with her business background, understands that you know there are hurdles that we have to go over. Well, this is a hurdle that we're going over, and I think working with TAP and working with anyone that's in this business, we're open for business, but I'm, you've opened a bigger issue here, and I'm, I'm glad that the chief and, and, uh, and, um, uh, and members of the protection and emergency services uh, management are here today because this is, we have to address it, and like, the e-bike, e-scooters, that's the future. That's where we're going. And so let's get ready to go for a ride. That's a good closing. Chair, <laughs> um, I just, um, just so there's no confusion on it. So we, we do have um, reference to e-bikes in the, it's under power assisted. It, it defined. Um, in the traffic bylaw, and uh, it mirrors the provincial legislation. It's also covered in the in the uh, Victoria Park bylaw too. And uh, but uh, certainly the mayor's comments were noted on those other things, and we'll we'll look into that. Thank you, Chief. Any other questions, comments, concerns? And where do we go from here? We just let go to status quo and have Dale and Taft keep working together for this year and 
and in the meantime, trying to get administration, everybody involved, to do the bylaw for bicycles, e-bikes, e scooters, anything underneath the sun. Flying saucers for your worship. Uh, <laughs> uh, yes. Anyway, um, are we good with that? Taff, you're okay? Thank you very much, everybody, for your time. Uh, I need a motion to move for adjournment. Moved by Councillor Beck. Second. Second by your worship, Mayor. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.